Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here with an introduction to antiderivatives for you. Derivatives give us information about rates of change that we like to know. So for example, if we start with some position function s of t, and we take the derivative of the position function, that gives us what we usually call v of t, which is our velocity function. We could again then take the derivative of our velocity function, so that would be v prime of t. We usually call that a of t, and that's our acceleration function. And oftentimes it's useful to be able to reverse the process. Let's say I know something about velocity of an object, but I would like to know about its position. Or I know about its acceleration, and I would like to know its velocity. Reversing this process of finding the derivative is just called finding the antiderivative of a function. We call a function capital F of x the antiderivative of some function f of x if its derivative is equal to that function. Let's start out with a basic example function of say 2x and we ask what is the antiderivative of this function 2x. If you think about a function whose derivative might be 2x, you might come up with something like x squared. That certainly has a derivative of 2x. But it turns out there are lots of other functions with this same derivative of 2x. We could have something like the function x squared plus 1. Taking the derivative of the x squared term would still give us 2x, and taking the derivative of the constant is going to give us 0. So we'll still have an overall derivative of x squared plus 1 being 2x. A similar thing is going to happen with x squared minus 2. We would have a derivative of 2x for the first term and a derivative of 0 for the second term since it's a constant. So really there's an overall pattern of a family of functions that have a derivative of 2x, and that will be the function x squared plus any constant. The derivative of any constant will just give us 0, and so the derivative will depend only on this term x squared. We call this plus c the constant of integration. We would tack that on to any general antiderivative. The idea is this constant is arbitrary. It could be a positive number, it could be a negative number, it could be 0. But any function with this format will have a derivative of 2x, and so all of these functions are considered the antiderivative. How we write in mathematics that we're taking the antiderivative of a function, so when we take the derivative of a function of x, we usually write d dx, the derivative with respect to x, of f of x, and we call that f prime of x, for example. For the antiderivative, we have this notation. We know that our answer will be capital F of x plus some constant of integration. The process of taking the derivative is called differentiating, so differentiation gives us the derivative. Here the process of finding the antiderivative is integrating, or integration. When we differentiate, you can see derivative with respect to x here. The same thing with integrating, you can see that we're integrating with respect to x here because we have dx on the end. This dx tells us that x is the variable of integration. This front symbol here is called our integral sign, and the function that we are integrating, finding the antiderivative of, is actually called our integrand. And this entire statement on the left-hand side is referred to as the indefinite integral. Coming up next in our series, we have videos about the power rule for integration and doing integration just using reverse derivative formulas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.